Thanks for tuning in to Bourbon Drop. I'm your host, Myron. Today, we've got a distillery on the channel that I've been wanting to get on the channel for quite a while. It was part of the Lost Episodes, Four Roses. I did something completely idiotic with the SD card, wiped out a, quite a few episodes, but that was way back when. Anyway, got my hands on another bottle of Small Batch Select. Let's get it. Bottom Drop. Bottom Drop. Small Batch Select is one of my all-time favorites, and this is a new series that I'm doing called Shelf Life. These are bottles that sit on the shelf day in and day out. You can always find these bottles when you go into any ABC, any liquor store, depending on where you're at. So I wanted to shine some light on those bottles. So I hope you join me in this new series I have called Shelf Life by Like comment subscribe hit that bell notification so you can always be up on top of the newest and latest videos that i put out let's get into the nose it's got a nice little funk man four roses always comes with a nice little funk and nothing but fruit you do get some of that oak but you get a lot of that fruit up front I even get cherry in this thing, man. I'm telling you, this is why this is one of my favorite distilleries. These two right here are single barrel selects. This is OESV and, no, I'm sorry. This is OES, OBSF and OESF. Both of these are actually in this blend. Five proprietary yeast strains and they have two different mash bills. So this one right here has OBSV, which is supposed to be delicate fruit, Pear, apricot, spicy, and creamy, OBSK, rich in spiciness and full-bodied, OBSF, mint, fruity, spicy, full-bodied, uh, OESK, spicy, full-bodied, OESF, mint, fruit, and full-bodied. That is a lot <laughs> to say, but pretty much these two kind of mirror each other. So when you look at the back of the neck tag and you see that both of these two recipes right here say mint, fruit, full body, and the OBSF says it has a little bit more spice. And I can kind of agree with that one because this one right here is a little spicier than this one. Let's get into the palate. Mm. Four Roses just does it for me, man. You get a slight hint of an earthy note, but under that earthy note, well, over that earthy note, it's nothing but rich fruits. I mean, you get a lot of cherry, a lot of plum, a lot of raisin. This thing right here, man, all of those like red fruits, um, I don't get the apricot and pear that they say that's in here. I get a lot of plum and dates and raisins and it's just, it's very rich and, and those cherry notes are very prominent in this bottle. Let's go back into the nose. Yeah, that's, man, that's really nice. All of those fruits, they just hit you all at once. It is, I've said this before, it is like a fruit punch, a fruit medley. All of those fruits just hit you at once in the nose. I get a lot of cherry, a lot of plum, a lot of dates. Let's go back into the palate one more time. That is very enjoyable. All of those fruits, it's like they hit the tongue at different times. You get all those fruits at once, but then you get like this spikiness that just hits the tongue, like all of those fruits explode. And then across the back, there is this really deep, heavy cocoa powder finish. That is a good bottle right there. And one thing I'll say about this bottle is, not only do the fruits hit me in the front half of this bottle, but for some reason, once it gets about here, halfway down, it turns into a chocolate monster. I mean, this thing right here, man, one of the best bottles for $60 that you can possibly buy. Let's get into the breakdown. Is Four Roses Small Batch worth the chase? This right here is on the Shelf Life series, so 
This is not Chase. It is always readily available. You do not have to worry about that thing right there running out. And if it is in your market, I suggest you pick one up. Is it worth over retail? Right now, I think it is priced appropriately. This is one of the best $60 bottles you can get. You know my $60 monster. That is $19.20. But this right here offers a different experience and I believe it is just as good. And it comes in at 104. So you know it's not a chump when it comes to the proof. Would I give it to a new bourbon drinker? At 104, um, I think a new bourbon drinker would be able to handle this. This is not particularly spicy. Even at 104, it drinks so easy, man. It is ridiculous how easy it drinks. Now, my palate has gotten used to higher proofs, and I've said this before. Sometimes us more experienced bourbon drinkers, we will sip 104 and say, oh man, that's not that bad. You give this to a new bourbon drinker, it might burn their face off. So I am, I am not gonna say I would give it to a new bourbon drinker. I just don't think a new bourbon drinker would have that hard of a time getting this down. Will it always be on the bar? I This is readily available. It will always be on the bar. I will always keep a bottle of this on the bar. I try and keep a bottle of it on the bar, but it just goes so fast. So with that being said, let the whiskey flow never run out unless you're headed to a drop. Till next time.